in this tutorial we shall be learning logging in ASP.NET Core specifically we shall be learning iLogger injection log filters log providers how to log in main how to log in startup and how to log in your own services before we proceed to our detailed study let us review the classic old style of logging we all have done it in our applications we have always used it one way is to write debug dot write line this is a trace output this is some message that is written this message appears in the debug window on your visual studio when you run it in debug mode just to see where it occurs this is our output the program is running under debug mode and show output from debug in this drop down there are various options we will pick the debug option and this is the log this is the entire debug log and you can find your output you can found find your message somewhere inside this log like we wrote number of args is how many this is the message the debug trace message that we can see under our visual studio when we run it in debug mode similarly we are all familiar with our console dot write line this message can be seen in the console window so the same program is run under debug mode and output window is located the drop down drop down shows by the options build build order debug this option we were using for the trace output and you can find out your project the process that you are currently uh, running you can find out that and select it here and this whole log is the console log console output for this project and your message can be located somewhere there in fact if you see create host builder dot build dot run you can see that this is the same main as for our ASP.NET Core project that we have been discussing you can even write these lines there and verify that old style logging will work for you without, without any problems but if this is available and everybody is using it also then why do we have a special structured logging provided by the ASP.NET Core that why is it there for this there are certain problems with this one one problem is that this message there is no log level that is the importance severity whether the log is a warning log whether it is an error that information is not attached to it yes you can write your own starting like you might choose some symbol like error colon and all that that we all have been doing you may do it but what we are saying is that this is not available out of the box for us provided by the runtime library that we are using so log level is not available similarly volume of log output cannot be controlled if a developer has written 2000 statements of this type in his big project and if each statement gives out one output then you will have so many output lines always that it will be very difficult to find out the log items of interest and if you are writing your log to a file then that file will keep becoming heavy so volume is not controlled through configuration files it should be possible 
during development you will want an extensive log but when you have set it to production then you will want only a log above a certain level or of certain type so this configuration is not available through this mechanism there is no categorization also this log doesn't tell us from which class which method is this coming yes you can attach your own story here but that is bulky that is problematic so we want something that should be provided by the library so that we do not have to write any additional code so these are the basic issues the basic problems that we face with our classic logging let us now study what changes and what benefits the new logging system gives us before that let us introduce to the terminology of common terms one term that is commonly commonly uh, discussed is the logging provider what is a logging provider let us see logging provider is used to store and display the logs for us console is one debug is one these two we are already aware create default builder adds the following providers console is a mechanism for output debug is a mechanism for output from these two event source is also available this writes to a cross platform event source event log is also available on windows platform only we have we have four logging providers that are made available by create default builder so if you write one message to log then that message is shown on the console also is shown on debug also shown on event source also and shown on event log also it is possible to remove all of them and add only some specific ones we will show later how to do that then these four are added by default but there are various others that are available list of built in asp.net core loggers console debug event source event log they are already added by this create default builder but azure app services file is also an is also a provider what this does azure app service file logs to text files in an azure app this will log to a text file console is only for display debug is only for display but there is nothing that allows us to store something in the file they have provided for azure applications but if you want to provide a logger that will write to a file out of azure application then you will have to use some third party libraries or maybe you will have to write a custom logger i will come to that in a moment another is azure app services blob application insights these are the ones that are available built in asp.net core but there are many and more versatile also and written very well also and we can integrate them also to our asp.net projects they are available from third parties open source i'll give the list in a moment the next term is log level log level and description trace is one level debug is one level information is one level warning is one level and error is one level critical is one level and none is another let me give briefly what they are trace is the most versatile the most verbose the most detailed log that is available it is a very voluminous contain the most detailed passages debug log it is for debugging and development 
this should be used only during debug mode during development mode use with caution in production due to the high volume that is also one thing but it may include some sensitive data also information is for general flow like you might say constructor called method called some message like id or whatever you might like to see this is for providing you useful information of the flow during the general flow flow of your application then there is warning warning is for abnormal or unexpected events typically they include errors or conditions that don't cause the app to fail so this is some sort of a warning then there are error conditions for errors and exceptions that cannot be handled these errors will not cause your application to crash but they are still errors these messages indicate a failure in the current operation or request not an application failure then you have a critical level also critical level is a very serious failure for example data loss or out of disk space then there is one more level called done that means nothing is shown on the screen nothing is logged so these are the various levels that are available to you for more detail at all you should refer the documentation on mstn since this is an introduction only let us now see the next term log category what is a log category category is an arbitrary string any string convention is to use the class name so you know from where is the error where is the log coming for example see this dump info means this is the log level for information then microsoft.asp.net core.hosting.diagnostics this is the class that is giving the log and this is the category this is the category this is the message this part is the message so a category is an arbitrary string and usually the class name is the category log event id you can attach a number to a log this is an additional information that you can attach could be a serial number could be any code also so if we see the log this is the info log this is the warning log this is again the category and this number in the square brackets is the log event id you can write an id on your own when you issue a log you have a parameter called id you put that id there and that id is shown here as i said this id can be a serial number a serially running number it could also be any code also the basic purpose is that you should be able to search for a particular id in the dump of logs then log scopes what is a log scope purpose of scopes is to add the same values to every log message see if i have 20 log messages from this point of code to this point of code and i want to add a particular data to each of them maybe i want to add let us say id id equal to 20 this 20 i want to add to each of these messages one way is to format this id into every message that is possible but another method is to use the concept of a scope let me show you how this is the log i'm writing i have a logger instance we'll talk that later create a scope using logger.begin scope transaction id 87 
this is one scope that is created we have nested a second scope with it logger dot begin scope date time now this id is a placeholder for 87 now is a placeholder for the first base first parameter that is coming here you could, instead of id you could have written anything x even then 87 would have come here similarly in the place of now you could have written anything z pq any identifier would have worked the first parameter after the comma that will be put into the first identifier here okay this is a scope this is a scope then this bracket and this bracket this defines the scope area the first message is this one and the second message is this one if you see the console output now info because we use log information log error would have given error here log information is example log message this is the message then a category is by default added for the current class dot program we did not define any id for the message so zero is kept by default now if you see transaction id 87 date time this appears here also and with the second log message the same data is appearing here also this is because of this scoping so you can run this program uh, you won't be able to run because i haven't given the complete code but uh, you can have an idea from here later on you can run it also at the end of this tutorial you will be able to run this program also if this is clear so this data is attached to every message that you are showing within these scopes there are third party logging providers also i gave you logging providers that are built in but there are third party logging providers also these are some of the lists that are all available on the jet hub so there are many of them for this you will have to visit the msdn articles on logging you will find all of them click them study them let us move to the next part now. let us see a practical create logs in main let us see how we can create a log in main this is our main program first of all we have to catch hold of ilogger ilogger interface this instance we need this instance the object ilogger has a method log information log error log warning log debug whatever how to obtain this interface how to obtain this instance for this you will need to obtain the get required service this you will need the asp.net core contains a dependency for this in its container ilogger it will create an ilogger for the program class this is the program class this will add an ilogger for the program class what does this mean that is it will automatically add a category based on the program class nothing else i need a host from host i will get services from services i will get required service for my dependency i need ilogger so host is obtained from create host builder dot build host is run afterwards between this we have added this code get the logger instance host dot services dot get required service ilogger program then log information 
and this is the format that is used hello logger time time is put in curly braces this is the message template what is the message template i write hello logger hello logger and some identifier followed by a list of arguments the first placeholder will receive the first argument this is the log message template it uses the name placeholders dot numbers do not use this for logging you should use name placeholders so this is how you can log a message in main and if i see the console output this is the console output info by because of log information why program because of this this zero event id is not specified so it is zero and this is the actual message let us see more you should run this on your own computer have a practice let us add another logger we added a logger for program class for program category we can add another logger also see how we do it the same in i host you get the host host get required service i logger for program logger dot log information line now this is the event id this is an overload that allows us to put event id id this is the event id this is the message and this is the parameter i am adding a second logger for the string class you can add a logger for any class any class that is registered on this program string is available we have any custom class also is possible so the same story i logger to host dot services dot get required service i logger for string and logger to dot log information 10 is the event id this is the entire message and what is the output the output is this event id this one this event id this one and string coming from here and this is the path to the program and this is the message run this code on your computer to see for yourself how to filter a log logs of a category are shown only if they have a minimum log level let us say we have a category for string we want logs for string to appear only if they are error or above filtering is to adding a mechanism so that for a given category logs are shown only if they are above a minimum threshold let us see how to do that this is our create host builder we have added if you remember host dot create default builder and dot configure web host defaults between them we have added configure logging we will programmatically configure it so what have we done we have written config dot add filter this says the filter for string string category is log level dot done that is nothing should be shown so if we run the previous code then the statement for the message for string will disappear now i run the same program and i find that there is no log for string because the filter has been applied this is the complete code that i can show you this is our public static void main this is create host builder logger for program logger for string 
this is the information that we logged for the string but in create host builder we added a filter this caused the log for string to go away log level dot none means nothing will be shown so this causes the messages for the string to disappear clearing all providers i told you that by default four providers are added but let us see how to clear all of them and add just one of them create default builder adds the console debug event source event log log messages are sent to all of them we have already told you this code shows how to remove all of them see this is by create host builder host dot create default builder this part i have added configure logging config dot clear providers this means everything is removed then specifically we add config dot add console so message every log message will now go only to console but to no one else if instead of this i write dot add debug then messages will go to the debug window and to nowhere else so this is how you can clear all the providers and add some specific ones it is never recommended that you add configuration information through program all configuration should be done as far as possible through your log file uh, through your uh, config files so let us see how to do that how to configure logging through app settings dot json file let me explain this if you open app settings dot json then i don't say you will find this one you will find uh, i'll tell you you will find only only this part this will not be there but i have added it for explanation now this is the logging part of the configuration one part is log level the second part is debug the third is event source this is as far as the logging this ends here and starts here log level means that whatever you put into this whatever you configure here will apply to every provider debug means that it is specific only to the debug provider console means it is specific only to the console provider and event source similarly means that it this part is specific only to the event source provider now let us study what is for all providers we say this this uh, see this is string microsoft dot hosting dot lifetime this is the category this means any category that starts with this one will have a log level of none this is a filter we have shown how to add filter programmatically just now but you can configure it through app settings also microsoft none this means that any any category that starts with microsoft will have no no log but it is overridden this way so microsoft dot hosting dot lifetime it it showing none but we could have written here anything that would have been obeyed clear so this is the provider this is the category for all categories debug information and specifically specifically for microsoft dot hosting dot star anything that starts with after with the microsoft dot hosting the level will be trace these are filters these are specific filters that are added 
let us see how to create logs in startup.cs file. I have not talked about startup so far in my lectures, but since for completeness I must show it, let me show you how to do that. Startup you see a method called configure services. Let us not worry about all that. There is a method called configure. Constructor has not been shown here. Two methods are there by default configure and configure services. To the configure method, the runtime can provide an iLogger here if you add a parameter for it. We have added a parameter iLogger startup logger. Your runtime will provide you a logger for startup method. Inside main, inside main we were using a different technique. We were using get required service. But here the service is already made available to you by the runtime. This is how you can get your logger in startup in the configure method. And once you have the logger, you can log information or whatever you can do with it. Now there are two points here. Logger injection. This is called injection. When runtime provides you an instance through a parameter, this is injection here. Logger injection into the startup constructor is not supported. If you write a constructor and try to obtain this in the constructor, that is not supported. Logger injection into startup.configure services, here also you cannot add a parameter to configure services. This is because there are certain restrictions that you can study in the documentation. The moral, the whole point is that you can get your iLogger only in the configure method. And once you have the logger, you can call its methods to start logging. How to configure a service that depends on iLogger? We told you about main, a different method. We told you about startup, a still different way. Now suppose that you have your own class and how to get a logger there. Step 1 is to write the service. So I'll simplify the story for you. Uh, I'll explain. This is an interface i by class. Any interface contains any method, do log or something. This is a method. This interface to be implemented by my service. My service is basically a class public class c by class it implements i by class and this is the constructor to the constructor your i logger will be injected by the asp.net runtime this injection was not allowed for the startup class but this will be available to you in the constructor of your own service public constructor I logger, we will store this logger here as a member. Read only I logger underscore logger. This is stored here, reference is stored here. And this is the implemented I by class. And here, when this method is called from outside, this logger will log this information. This is the code for the class, simplified code that I have written. Now, what is our step 2? How do we actually execute this part? How do we actually get this? Step 2 and the last step is to add your service to the DI container. This may be complicated for you at the moment, but for completeness I have included here. You can come back to watch this portion anytime after you complete the whole course. But for explanation. This is your startup. This is the configure services. In the services, you register your service with the DI container. 
the method of registration is services dot add singlet on you you have two or more methods also we will discuss them sometime later but we'll for the timing we'll take add singlet on this is the interface and this is the class that implements this interface this is required after this you come to your configure obtain an instance this instance can be obtained anywhere in your pro project how to obtain from the application builder get the services like we got in main from the services get required service and get your instance once you have this call the method hello logger and your output will be displayed now how are things going on here because you have registered your class with the di container the i logger the i logger will be sent to the constructor by the run time automatically that is why from there we are able to get that i logger and perform our logging notes on singlet on services singlet on services are disposed when the service provider is disposed on application shutdown so this is a bit out of the way don't worry about this but before i close let me summarize this whole story for you first you write a class in the constructor you obtain i logger cache that somewhere read only and all this is your class from the uh, during configure services you add that register that class add singlet on we are registering that class here this is what causes i logger to be made available to you you do not have to pass it anywhere this is the basic moral of the whole story you do not have to pass i logger from outside it will automatically go there so app dot application services this actually gives you reference to the services and from there you get the required service for i my class and call its methods and logger is already sent there then logger will start logging so this is how thank you for watching that tutorial